Hi everyone, this is Joe Zim from Joe Zim's JavaScript blog, bringing you the final video in the Backbone.js screencast series. This video will have me converting this application over to using Require.js, which means it's more of a Require.js video than a Backbone video, but whatever. Sadly, there are a ton of things I've seen in this app that I want to improve upon, but I don't want to be just doing Backbone.js apps on the blog, so instead I'm just going to create a separate GitHub project sometime and keep the changes there. Anyway, you want to see the tutorial instead of listening to me yammering, so let's go. So there's a couple things that we need to do first, which is download require.js, which you can fire, find at require.js.com, and click on the download link over here. Um, minified version right here. We'll save that. Right here, we'll call it dot min to have a more uh, perfect naming system. Whatever. Um, anyway, so the other thing we're doing is we're using lodash, which is a drop in replacement for underscore. There's two reasons we're using this one, it's got a lot of performance improvements and bug fixes and stuff. And two, it has built-in support for Require.js, whereas if we're going to stick with uh, underscore, we'd have to uh, either patch it or use some type of shim. So we'll just download this. Alright. Then I'll actually go into the folder I used to. Um, I'm gonna make backbone.min and we're just gonna make jQuery.min like that and that'll work great. We don't even need underscore anymore. So just delete that. Here's all of our libraries now. Now the first thing we wanna do when preparing this application for uh, being used with Require.js is we want to split some of the files up. Um, in models, this was just one file, but it has two different classes in it, and both of them need to be accessed individually, so we need to split them up. So we're going to first delete this, uh, cut that create a new file, paste it, save it as wine collection .js. All right. Um then you might be thinking, well, what about wine list? Wine list actually uh has two different view things in here, but the wine list item view is not used anywhere except within wireless view so so just keeping them in the same file will work just fine uh, so yeah we won't bother splitting that one up another change I want to make is utils I'm going to change this to GPL create a new folder called utils and stick it in there that way if we ever come up with any more utilities for the application we can just stick them in there I'm breaking a lot of things right now, but that's okay. We're working on not breaking them. So if all of these tags are just going to get replaced. And we're just going to do require. Do we require JS or just require? It's just require dot min dot JS. Okay. So we're just going to get that. Then the other thing. We need to do is create a data main, and this will be js slash config. Now, what this is, what this is, is it grabs this file first. This is the main file for this application. Um, you would think we'd be grabbing main.js, but uh, we want to do some configuration first. Config the config file will grab main.js. So 
let's create the config file. I'm just going to go ahead, copy and paste real quick. So let's set this to JavaScript. There we go. So first thing we have is depths, which is dependencies, which is the main JS file. So that after all this is read through, it will actually load main.js, which is good. Base URL is JS, which means we're just going to the JS folder first. Um, in most applications, you'd probably want to just do slash JS, but since this is one, a single page application, and two, it's a subfolder, it wouldn't actually work. I could do slash wine cellar slash JS, but we're not going to. We can put JS. Now, paths are extra paths that you can automatically load in. So jQuery, Lodash, and Backbone are just going to be like that instead of having to type this in every time because just about every file requires these or is dependent on these files. So we're just going to be able to type in jQuery, Lodash, or Backbone. Now we're going to create a shim for Backbone because Backbone isn't built with uh, the AMD or required JS spec right away. So we're going to shim it. So it requires uh, Lodash and jQuery, and then it exports Backbone. Backbone is the variable that is returned to the other modules that require it. So we're going to save this right here. Alright, so that's done. We'll go into here. This is already set. We'll save this. I don't really need to touch these anymore. Now, first, let's go to main.js because this one is going to be the annoying little bugger. Now, this one isn't defining a module, so we're going to be using require instead of define. Now we're going to have a little array of dependencies, which I'm going to copy and paste from a different one because there are a lot of them. Because all of them, pretty much everything is used within main.js. So we're getting jQuery, we're getting Lodash, we're getting Backbone. Now we have to get all the different views. And then we also have to get the template utility, and we need the models and collections. Um, then we need to add a comma over here, um, and we'll create a function, and we'll create a variable that we can use to access each one of these things. So that's for jQuery, and then Lodash, and then Backbone, and it was header view. Start view, um, wine view, wine list. So we had wine list view, and then utils was just TPL, and this was just the model, so it's just wine. Um, and then just the collection, so we'll do one collection. So those are all the parameters. So now, this is all just one function that's running. And we'll end the require function. So each one of these files will be downloaded and then will be injected into each of these variables. Now what's de injected is dependent on how you define the modules. So we're going to go ahead and start defining modules. We'll start with TPL. This is going to be the easiest. TPL doesn't have, uh, well, it has one requirement, which is jQuery to do that. So we're going to define instead of just require. I'm just going to call in jQuery and oops, the comma. And that'll be done. 
dollar. Now at the bottom here, we need to return TPL. So since we're sending a function into define, the return value of the function is what gets sent in as the variable when you uh, require it. So when we look for TPL, this TPL will be whatever we return here. So and the function and require or define. Then we'll move on to the models, and we've got them both up right here. So this one, I'm gonna go ahead and grab, copy. This one requires jQuery, Lodash, and Backbone. Actually, it doesn't require jQuery. Oh well. Not a big deal because they're already loaded. So we'll just end that one. Uh, we need to return wine collection. So I'm going to grab this copy, paste into here. Where the window part because that's not what we want. Return line as the module there. All right, now we're going to jump into the views. So we got details, we got the models, libs are already, and we don't need anything for it. views. So let's grab all these and throw them in here. Here's the window part. This is going to need four things jQuery, Lodash, Backbone, and util the template library. So we're just going to do that. And turn header view. It's the same thing for all of these. We just need jQuery low dash backbone and the template library and then we return the uh, class that we have as the module. Like this one, we're only going to be returning uh, a wine list view because, like I said earlier, wine list item view is not used anywhere except within this file. And that should be everything. So let's go over here. We're going to go to wine cellar new. And it's working. Now, if we go in here and look at the network, oh, we gotta refresh. Um, network, sorry. We just called require.min.js. If we look at the, uh, I'm so bad. Just, here we go. Down here, we just have the one script calling require, but it pulled in config, main, jQuery low dash header start called in everything that we need and it is not running. It was running, wasn't it? There's no errors. I don't know. <laughs> um well the one I'll have on GitHub I know for sure works. I don't know why. It's not doing anything. It should be calling something. Anyway. Go timeout. That's interesting. Well, that's all the steps we needed to take. Um, not exactly sure why it didn't work, but that's all there is to it. Uh, the other thing you might want to look at 
we'll just go over to here. Because I know this one works. Yeah. And it calls in all the files we need. Anyway, so another thing we can look at is called r.js. So if we go back to rjs.org, they have optimizer, which is just a file that you run in the uh, command line or with Node or whatever, and it will take all of these files that you required, put them in the correct order. And compress it down, minify it down, and create just one file that you call. And it'll update the index file. So that makes it really nice. Um, I mean, the problem with what we're doing is we have so many files that we're calling, which can cause a lot of problems with loading multiple files and everything. It's slower. But compressing it down into one file, compressed, minified, everything makes it even better. Um, well, that wraps up things for this video and for this series. So I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. God bless. Happy coding.